Today we're going to talk about asbestos. Asbestos started out here at the um, management, started out here at the seminary about oh, 12 to 15 years ago. And it was when the um, health department or whatever governing organization deemed it was dangerous, uh, sort of pulled the trigger and uh, got this thing started. And the seminary took the step of training all of us maintenance guys at the time to uh, be trained and certified to the point of actually uh, taking the abatement out. And it was a huge training course, three days worth of stuff, building special tents and gloves and the respirators and all that kind of stuff. And after a couple of years, we used absolutely zero of it. And so we realized that that was way overkill. And we've backed off to the point where you just need to be aware of the asbestos, where it's at, and what, to, what not to disturb as you're working on, in the facilities. Y'all are most likely and most susceptible to touching the materials that contain asbestos. So that's what the intention of this training session is about. It's not to train you to be an asbestos abatement professional. It's only to know, for you to be aware of, of what this is. Asbestos Asbestos has been known as the procrastinating killer. And so let's find out why that is. Uh, this, asbestos is a non-combustible, chemical-resistant, fibrous material form of impure magnesium silicate. And the asbestos takes on a fibrous form that can become invisible to the human eye. Uh, asbestos is typically just a, mat a material that's mined both in quarries and underground areas. It is usually found comprising veins and other rock. And in most cases, it appears to be the product of metamorphism. <coughs> and the health effects, one of the things that we want to talk about now, and asbestos can continually be broken down until it reaches its smallest dimension of three micrometers. And to give you a comparison, a hair is 17 micrometers. And the, the uh, breakdown of that, uh, the particles remain spear-like. And so that's the danger. That's what the health hazard is in asbestos, is it breaks down so small and it remains spear-like. So as a result, the exposure to asbestos can lead to three serious health issues. Here is uh, a picture of, a, of lung tissue, and an asbestos particle is lodged into the lung. The result of this is scarring around the infected area. Asbest asbestosis is the first disease, and it's the, the lesser of, uh, of the three, but it's still uh, very dangerous. Asbestosis is scarring of the lung tissue from an acid-produced by the body's attempt to dissolve the fibers. So you have this fiber that's lodged into your lung tissue and so now your body's trying to react and remove that. The latency period for this disease is often 10 to 20 years. So if you're exposed to it now, 10 to 20 years from now, you may start experiencing some symptoms from that. Asbestosis is characterized as a hard cough shortness of breath, poor sleep, fatigue, loss of appetite, and loss of weight. The second disease uh, is mesothelioma, and that is simply a, a cancer of the lining of the lung. And most patients die within 12 months of diagnosis of this. The cancer is caused only by asbestosis exposure. It's the only documented way that you can contract this particular disease. And the latency period for mesothelioma is 20 to 50 years. So most people probably outlive that particular disease if it were to come along, um, unless you get started early and, and so forth. And then finally, you have cancer. Asbestos, asbestos exposure has been the cause of lung, gastrointestinal tract, kidney, and larynx cancer and lung cancer. And so the latency period for cancer is often 15 to 30 years. So what, where is asbestos used? Um, 
Uh, most of us think asbestos has been outlawed. They don't use that anymore. It's, it's gone and it's just not in products today. Well, that's not true. It is used in products today. Uh, and in fact, you'll f still find these products, uh, asbest asbestos, in these components. Sheetrock taping, mud and texture coats, vinyl floor tiles, sheeting, adhesive, plasters, and stucco. You can read along there of those. Brake pads. So, you know, we think um, the asbestos is really a, a dangerous, hazardous thing. In fact, the danger is really for people, for those that are dealing with asbestos on a daily basis, mining it, or there may be brake specialists who are taking brakes off of cars and putting them back on because asbestos is in those, those things. For us everyday people working in the buildings and that kind of thing, you're actually more exposed to asbestos at walking down the sidewalk because of all the brakes that are, uh, cars that are driving by, applying their brakes, stirring up dust out there than you are anywhere in these facilities. So your likelihood of contracting any kind of asbestosis if you follow these guidelines is zilt, I mean, absolutely zero uh, to that. But you need to be aware of the hazards and the things about that. So they haven't really been able to document that someone was exposed to asbestos one time they contracted any of these diseases, but they don't really have any way to be able to say where, how many times you're exposed to it that you will get these diseases. So that's why they have this training, is just make sure you're aware of what we're around and, and uh, be careful around these particular items. Uh, some pictures of asbest, asbestos, materials that are used. One is, uh, you'll see a, uh, in a family home, this is piping insulation. The one on the left there, is considered a friable material. It can be crushed by, tip, by just average hand pressure, so it's a friable type material. And, um, and then the opposite of that is non-friable, uh, which can't be, it's really extremely hard or it's connected to something hard that can't be crushed by hand. And uh, you see it just comes in different types and, uh, and looks. It's hard to tell asbestos just by looking at it. Most of the time, if it's an old product, something 40 to 50 years old, and it's an insulation type, you can be pretty sure it has asbestos in it because it was commonly used, and it was an extremely good product, and it still is today. There's nothing better than the asbestos material uh, and with insulating, fire retardants, durability, and aesthetics. There is a, there's absolutely nothing on the market that's better than that, but it is kind of a hazard that we have to be aware of. How does asbestos spread? When broken, when broken down enough, asbestos becomes airborne and can travel anywhere. Because it is heavier than air, it can only travel by gusts of winds, or we'll say puffs of air, but it, does not, but it does have an impressive floating in air ability. So if you tear a piece of it down, it is so small, it could float for eight hours before it ever actually hits the ground. So the air conditioning comes on and it starts blowing it around, and before you know it, it could just completely uh, uh, invade a, uh, a space within an affected building. Where can asbestos be found at DTS? The only buildings that have no recorded asbestos are Swiss Tower and Campbell Academic Center. It doesn't mean that there's not any in there, but that's the only place that it's recorded that it does not have it. Anytime we renovate in any of our buildings, whether it's been deemed as clean or not, we have to get an asbestos inspection before we do any renovations of any buildings. They go through and they test and re, you know, retest things that were tested a long time ago, they retest all those things again to make sure something hasn't been changed out and brought back in at another time and, and uh, brought asbestos back in. So we're constantly doing that uh, on a regular basis to make sure that the campus and the personnel are protected. The most common components for asbestos to be found on campus are in floor tile mastic, the glue that's holding the floor tile down, ceiling texture, up on the ceiling you see the, uh, not this ceiling texture, but the, um, uh, the uh, acoustical texture, roofing flashing, you have the flat bed of roofing and then you've got the, the part that curls up against the wall, that typically has asbestos and we do have that documented around campus, and pipe insulation. The asbestos in Hendrix is contained within pipe insulation, as you see there, and it's encapsulated. And that encapsulation means there's a, a, 
a firm coating that's holding the as, as, uh, insulation together, which has the asbestos in it, so it's safe. It's encapsulated by a really durable coating to prevent it from being released or bumped or, or damaged very easily. Asbestos in Mosier, that's one of our largest exposures on campus is that entire ceiling of Mosier is asbestos containing material. It's encapsulated, there's a paint upon layers of paint encapsulating all of that, but that is uh, all asbestos containing material. So you don't ever wanna just drill through the ceiling, installing things, or if you're taking light fixtures down, Dale is really careful about taking those fixtures loose and uh, not disturbing all of that that kind of thing. Uh, an abatement of that nature could, gosh, Glenn, what, $100,000 to take all that out? So we always look for opportunities to try to get it out, but it has to coincide with a renovation. You can't just go in and strip the ceiling because you have to disrupt so much in the building to do that. Okay, what is our risk with asbestos? Uh, it is easy to never have exposure to, de to DTS-related asbestos. And I say DTS-related asbestos because, again, you're exposed to asbestos more walking down the street than you are here in the campus. But DTS-related asbestos is very uh, extremely low possibility that you'll ever be exposed to it. Uh, the following points will ensure your safety. Check for asbestos before you attempt to pull off, pull tile off of the floor. Sand the tile past its protective seal. That might relate to custodial. You're dealing with these floors and you're cleaning the floors on a regular basis. Uh, <clears throat> if you suspect that you might knock some of those tiles loose with the work that you're doing, you'll wanna refer to the uh, asbestos location report that you have with you to see, am I dealing with tile that has asbestos under it? Um, Pull protective insulation off of pipes that contain asbestos. We've got those all through the mechanical rooms that Brian's guys know about, and they have little elbows, and they're easy to knock or take something heavy. You could break that insulation and knock some asbestos loose. So you, we have all of those labeled, like you saw one of those previous labels in there. Uh, drill through protective insulation on pipes. You don't want to do that for asbestos reasons and you don't want to hit the pipe once you get inside there, so you don't want to drill through, through pipe insulation. And drill through ceiling texture. Don't do that, uh, especially in Mosier. As long as you are aware of asbestos locations prior to any destructive work, you will be safe from DTS-related asbestos. The asbestos location re report is available in the FPO shared folder. It's available to all of you to be able to get onto your computer and find it and then you've got the latest copy there. We, Stephanie and I did just one last quick review because we noticed that Lincoln Hall was sold, so we were able to X that big chunk of asbestos out of the list. And, uh, and then mail services will have a large section removed this, this spring. <clears throat> All right, so our summary, although asbestos was a commonly used material in past, it has been deemed as a health hazard seek materials that are asbestos free. And so whenever we have a roofing replacement, we ask for non-asbestos containing materials. But to make sure you don't get that, you have to physically go read the label of the roofers doing that, and there's really hardly any way to control that. You can tell them all you want, no asbestos materials, but someone stops and picks a bucket of something up on the way from Lakewood Hardware or whatever, and they bring it to the job, and if you don't see it, then, and it has asbestos, you've brought asbestos back into the project. So we could go through an extensive abatement of asbestos and then the material comes right back in. Uh, there's really no control over that, which is unfortunate. If you are aware of a site that contains asbestos, it is best not to disturb it. For disturbing it will cause it to spread if not performed by trained individuals. Trained persons abating asbestos must wear special respirators and work within a protective environment to prevent ins inhalation and ingestion of asbestos-containing materials. And DTS FPO staff are not trained or equipped to tamper with asbestos. All this is doing you is telling you what asbestos is about. Don't mess with it. All you, and you just need to know where it's at and stay away from it. Because asbestos is considered hazardous to one's health and because it affects a person 
Years after it has settled into one's body, it is deemed the procrastinating killer. Another thing, um, you know, everybody, there's always acronyms um, that you deal with uh, in our industry. And asbestos-containing materials, uh, insulation or something, is not asbestos. It, insulation is a, if it has asbestos, is a building, is a uh, asbestos-containing building material. Asbestos is only used as one of the components in the insulation. So asbestos containing building material, ACBM. The governing, I've mentioned the governing uh, governance of the regulation, regulations for asbestos, and that's the Texas Department of Health, Texas Department of Health, who regulates asbestos. <clears throat> Anytime we have to do an abatement, an application is made, we wait 10 days for that application to be approved, then the abatement contractors can come in and do that work and leave. Any questions? All right, well, y'all take your test, and then I'll go through the answers here in about five minutes.